We have a Craftsman T130. It is uh, running poorly. I, I was able to get it up on here, but uh, it just wants to not start sometimes, and when it starts, it wants to die out. Okay, so no matter what we're doing, it's just not wanting to stay uh started there so we've got all the supplies gathered up here that we'd need a bucket to train the fuel in if there's bad fuel in it if you just put new fuel in it as long as it didn't have anything in there or any debris in the tank you could reuse it but otherwise drain that and start fresh you're going to need a screwdriver regular screwdriver of some sort to either like a universal like this uh, or something where you can get down into the main jet of the unit so it, it can't be too terribly wide it can't be a big screwdriver you need a T30, Starhead 30. That's for taking the tank off. You can do it without taking the tank off, but it's very difficult. I prefer to take the tank off. That's, in my experience, the easiest way to do it. But you also need a 3 8 ratcheting wrench or regular wrench will work also. That or you can use a, uh, a socket that's 3 8 will also work since we are taking off the tank. If you don't take off the tank, you'll just need a 3 8 open end wrench. You can kind of maneuver it, and I'll show you how to do that. You need a 7 16 or an 11 millimeter deep well, and then a 5 16 or an 8 millimeter deep well also to get down and get the carburetor off. I don't believe the 7 16 or 11 millimeter has to be deep well, but the 5 16 will have to be, otherwise, you'll have to use an open end wrench. I always like to include some side cutters just in case you need to snip a little bit of the fuel line off or anything like that. Pliers to take the fuel line off. These pliers are pretty special. They are pliers that are real skinny. You will need something similar to that. Sometimes you can use needle nose, but they don't work the best. And that's to get the bowl off the bottom of the carburetor here. So there's not much room in there. Some people use a modified wrench or a wrench that is you know ground down on both sides so it can fit in there but we use this to get the bowl off the bottom so uh carburetor cleaner or compressed air either one works well carburetor cleaner works great along with compressed air but just to make sure everything's all cleaned up so I like torch tip cleaners. They're the best way to clean out the jet. If you don't have that, you can take pieces of like a wire brush or something like that. We do also use tiny pieces of wire brushes here. Those are used for the metering jets in the top, the idle jets. So I'll show you how to get this uh, carburetor taken off here and get it all cleaned up and back into action. So first we'll start here by taking the tank off takes a t30 to take it off if you don't have a t30 you can use an open end 3 8 to go ahead and take these bolts out at the back there's one on each side one here and one down directly back in here so there's four bolts that hold the top cover on one here one directly down here one here and one on the other side right here in the front so those are the only four bolts that hold it on there is also one screw under the top cover here that does need to be taken out. So we're gonna go ahead and take the tank off. Because that's much quicker for us. You can also take the air filter cover off at any point in time here. two here opposite will come off also and then the whole tank will be free so now your tank is completely free here all of the uh, hardware and everything there that attaches it to the frame is completely dislodged so it's 100% free ready to come out of there uh, as soon as you take your lines off. So you've got one here that's your EPA line, and then you've got your fuel line. Take those both off there. One of the easiest ways is to just put a fuel shut off there. If you do that, then you can go ahead and dump it out the top into your container or anything like that. I, I just hold on to it normally. 
and put it over in my other bucket to drain. But this will come straight up out and everything there is free. So the tank just comes straight up out of there after those four bolts, two on each side are out. So we're gonna go ahead and drain this. It looks a little yellow and get some new fuel in it. Get that carburetor all cleaned up and hopefully it'll be a good running machine for them. Next, you'll want to take your uh, 3 8 I've got a little right angle I use to take it off, but your 3 8 bolts all the way around the four I just talked about. Uh, depending on if it's a different engine and stuff, sometimes they're different in the front from the back. But... They are kind of hard to get back in uh, when you're getting uh, the cover put back on, but I'll show you how to kind of make sure you don't strip those out. They're one of the most difficult ones as far as the back two to get back in. Two front ones. And then you've got one screw that goes straight through here. It is a quarter inch on the outside and it's also got a slot for a screwdriver in it. So either way you want to do it, but that just connects the cover here to the plastic base of the carburetor. Probably to keep vibration down if I had to guess, but it's just a tiny little plastic screw and it goes straight down on the other side here. It's really, I don't, I don't really know what its usefulness is, but apparently someone decided they needed it at some point. Probably just stabilization, if I had to guess. So you'll just pull that whole piece there straight up off from there. Everything comes straight up. So now you're completely clear. There is a little notch here that it does have to fit through as far as that cleaner, but everything comes off. As soon as I take that off, one of the first things I like to do also is I like to go ahead and get rid of this plug here. So this bottom plug, uh, this is where a fuel pump would go for a uh, unit that had a fuel pump. We're gonna go ahead and just cut that plug off of there. You can use pliers or whatever you wanna do, but that plug makes installation extremely difficult and it's essentially useless anyway. So. Just take that bottom plug out of there. That will make putting this all back together a breeze. You'll just push everything back down. Otherwise, you have to fight against that pretty hard. So that'll make installation a lot easier for you. Now we're gonna go with the 7 16 deep well. Uh, I don't think it really needs the deep well on this. It doesn't really look like, but we normally just get the deep wells out on both of them since you'll need the 5 16 It's really hard to use a wrench in this case because the back one here is so tight in everything. But once you get the two off, you just pull them straight off there. Come straight off there. You'll want to clean that all up before it goes back together. But And then you've got 5 16 studs here that hold the carburetor on. You're going to want to, on those, get your either deep well 5 16 out or you're going to want to use a wrench. The wrench is uh, much difficult, much more difficult than using just a deep well. Deep well is nice, quick, and easy, just like you're doing anything else. You can unplug the wire at the bottom, it just pulls straight down. Unscrew both of those screws and everything is off here. It looks like this unit has the auto choke feature here. So I wanted to show you the linkage a little bit closer up up here on the ones with the um, choke solenoid. So the ones with the cho choke solenoid have an actuator that goes to the choke 
and also over here to the throttle. So when everything's working right, when you're moving your throttle back and forth, when you hit choke all the way, your choke should be fully actuated. And now that it's loose, it's a little bit off, but there is how it should look. So if that doesn't happen back and forth, then you've got issues uh, here, here at the choke. Um, if it is warm already, this will only allow the choke to close so far. It'll keep it back open. And it is spring loaded. So I wanted to show you kind of how the linkage and everything goes though in case you get something unhooked. It's very easy if you do it the way that I'm gonna show you, but if you get it off for some reason, there's how your linkage goes. This here can be taken off also with your T30 or you can use a 5 16 or an eight millimeter. Just a little plastic screw so you don't want to torque that down too hot uh, too high and um, get that all messed up so you can disconnect the quick connect here that was just the gasket that fell down through this here will take off by going down directly like that and then from there it's easiest if you take it and you flip the carburetor around all the way a 180 and then turn it up and out. I pull up the spring. There we go. Spring and the governor linkage there. So now we've got the carburetor completely off. We'll get it all set up here and I'll show you how to get it cleaned and back in action. So we've got the carburetor here. If you have compressed air, you can proceed to go ahead and blow it off at this point. Get all everything, kind of the dust and dirt off. If you don't, use your gum out. Your gum out will work well. If you don't have either, I mean, you can do it by hand really with anything. And as, as long as you're cleaning it up, you know, it, it doesn't take anything special to do this. You can clean it with anything as long as the carburetor is not too dirty. So anything you like some things work better than others we like the gum out it works well take the bowl off the carburetor here go ahead and just grab and twist the whole thing this one doesn't want to cooperate here so i'm gonna put it down this side there it popped yeah see that one was way more difficult than many of them you wouldn't probably be able to use like a needle nose or like a vice grips or anything to get that one loose. Some of them you may be able to get away with that on though. But really, skinny pliers is what you're going to need. So, uh, I don't really see hardly anything in the carburetor itself at all. It's a little bit of gunk that looks like it's just falling out. And I don't see a ton in there. We're still going to go ahead and get it cleaned up and get everything back in working order because it sure wasn't working right so you'll want to take the you can take the top jet out here at any point in time that's the one that you will need the tiny poker for something that you can use like a micro drill bit or something like that we've got them but there is a jet down straight through the middle of that so you want to poke down in there once we once we clean it up we're going to throw ours through the ultrasonic cleaner first before we actually clean any of this or finish up and show you how to clean it we're just going to get it taken apart to get it put in there you want to get that needle out there lightly tapping a lot of times works but if you look right in there you can see it normally they come out a little bit further Hmm. Strange. Very strange. It almost looks like on this end that this has been pressed in by something. That they've that they've done a permanent press on this. I've never seen that on one of these. Should be a removable pin. We're gonna remove it. That's for sure. Get our 
another handy set of punches here. Let's see what we got. Thirty seconds doesn't fit too bad. And we're just going to lightly tap on that. You don't want to go too hard. You don't want to break those tabs off. Hmm. It looks like it has moved a little bit. Wow, I've never seen that. I have never seen that on these. Hmm. It did move, that's for sure. Wow, that's a tough one. Normally they just pull straight out. I don't have an issue. I'm just using what I have handy here. And that 3 16 is actually a little too big for what we're needing. Wow. Seem like the perfect size on this side. Hmm. Weird, weird. Trying to back that back out of there. Yeah, so it does look like it has if you can see there, a flat end to it, so it beats in. It's uh, it's flange to stay stuck like that, which I definitely don't like. But uh, use a punch of some sorts. Obviously, it's got to be smaller than three sixteenths, just slightly. It looks like you can see right here that there was a little bit of rubbing, but. Just slightly smaller than 3 16 but use that to punch it towards the end that is actually sticking out from the aluminum. Uh, don't hit it too hard. You can spray some carb cleaner on it if it's real gummed up first. Normally these just come straight out. They're not pressed in like that. So again, kind of a rarity here, but shows you how to do it with next to no supplies. But we'll take that out here. You got your needle with your rubber seat everything looks in good shape you want to make sure when you're putting it back together just that everything here is clean otherwise it could stick up and flood your crank case with fuel down in here your main jet straight down through take it out just with either your screwdriver here showed you a couple different kinds it doesn't really matter which one but you do want it to be wide enough that it's going to make good contact here but not so wide where it's going to hit the outside so there's also your main jet down through now that gets stuck up in there you can look down through this way so while that's in there if you see down in there right at the top there you can see where it sticks through into the throttle body. If it gets stuck, you can spray some carb cleaner up through and you can take your screwdriver or pick or whatever you're using and you can come up here and push it through this way. See how that's going through there? Just push it up through. So, and then it should come out from that point. Sometimes you have to work it back and forth, uh, spray it with carb cleaner you know move it a little bit and then actually push back down through this way to shove it back fully in and then bring it back out just to kind of loosen everything up once you got some carb cleaner or some sort of fluid up in there to help clean it up so again everything in this one just looks perfect really i think it was probably just that bad fuel the guy had in it probably had water or something in it so no big deal there but if it's extremely dirty you want to clean all that up even better what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this in the carburetor cleaner here and the ultrasonic, and then we're gonna put everything back together. Now you don't necessarily wanna get this wet, so we're just gonna set it in kinda of at an angle. It usually works pretty well on these, with our cleaner anyway. There's our bucket there, it looks like it's about drained. What 
we're going to do is we're just going to set this in here with the bowl down in there. Just enough so we're not in the water with the solenoid. The solenoid can get wet. It's not really going to ruin it or anything like that. But if you get it wet, you're going to want to let it dry out for sure. Uh, at least overnight, if not for 24 hours. And then we always do an ohm test on them if they've gotten wet or been submerged. So could be a completely different uh, problem you run into if you submerge that. But if you don't have an ultrasonic, obviously just spray everything down. Make sure all the passageways that I'm going to show you are nice and clean. This is just kind of an extra step to clean anything that we're not seeing or that would take more than just a carb queen off on the inside. So more of a professional approach to it. So we're going to throw it in there for about 10 minutes. Come back and put it all back together. So we've got everything out of the cleaner here. Just wanted to show you how to make sure all of this is clean. So torch tip cleaner, uh, we use the Hobart brand, but any of them are fine just to, you want to clean down through all your orifices here. There's one straight down through the middle. You should be able to see a perfect circle down through there. If you cannot see a perfect circle down through there, it is not clean. You want to make sure if there's anything down in along that uh, little angle down in there, that's clean. Everything or anything on this needs to be cleaned off before it's put back together. This is the most important spot in the whole unit because that's what feeds the gas to the entire engine is through that hole. From there, you've got holes all up and down. There we go, the emulsion tube here. You wanna make sure that through, you can see light through all those holes also. This one, and it should be a perfect circle also. If it's not, you've got issues, so. You're gonna to wanna to clean those out with your torch tips. You can clean down through like this if it's real clogged, but make sure all of these holes are perfectly clean through here. That's another important area there is the emulsion tube. So, uh, needle and seat here. If you go along the edges here, just with your fingernail uh, or with a piece of plastic or something, you wanna make sure that that's, there's nothing on there. There's no buildup, there's no, uh, green there's no ethanol or deposits of any sort also on here you want to make sure it's even all the way around you want to make sure that there's no nicks or gouges or that it's not off or that it doesn't spring back another important part otherwise your crankcase will flood so down through here use your either micro drill bits or this is just a piece of a piece of a wire brush that I've taken just a couple couple looms from so poking down through there you just want to make sure that this is clear also otherwise your unit will surge on your solenoid here many times down in between the shutoff here and the walls it'll get bound up with a lot of stuff we don't put this in the cleaner so you'll just want to spray down through there you want to make sure if you see any green come out, if it changes any colors or anything like that at that point, you want to make sure that you work it back and forth and get all that out of there. Otherwise, if that gets caught up, you'll start getting backfires and everything like that. If it gets stuck in the on position or in the off position, you won't get any fuel to your engine and the engine won't start. So, But all of these areas here you want to clean out real well, whether with carb cleaner, compressed air, However you're doing it, down in every single orifice, you need this all clean. This just came out of the cleaner. It's pretty well clean. We just spray a little bit of carb cleaner on here to get all the residual water and simple green mix that we use off of it. So then we'll blow it off with some compressed air, get everything put back together here. Again, you should be able to, if you use light in any of these, you should be able to see light down through there. So if you put light through the side hole here, you should be able to see light through the tiny hole down through there. It should be a perfect circle. I'll see if I can get it on this one to, to show. It's kind of a small one. 
Yep. See, there it is. You should see that on every single one of them, no matter whether it's the emulsion tube through, whatever it is. You should see all the way down through there. Or the main jet here. Emulsion tube goes back in with the long end. Facing up. Main jet in, tighten it down. Wanna go ahead and grab the bolt, solenoid for now. Clean everything out. You wanna make sure that here, if there's any stickiness to it at all, any green gunk or anything, spray that out with gum out. And if it changes colors at all, if you see anything green in there, anything whatsoever, work that back and forth and get that all out of there. Sometimes it takes quite a while before it gets all out. That's where all your sediment at the bottom of the bowl a lot of times will go and it'll get stuck there. So you'll have issues, spray this all off blow down through all of our passageways here. I know we've already done it, it never hurts to do it again. Alright. Again here we'll want to make sure that all along here is free of any kind of dirt or debris run your fingernail or a piece of uh, piece of plastic along there and see if you can get anything to catch there's an issue nothing should catch on there everything should be smooth you shouldn't see really any kind of varnish uh, go all along the corners here all along both sides make sure that everything here is a hundred percent otherwise it'll leak into your crankcase so we're gonna go ahead and put it back together it goes in just like such if this comes off for any reason, it does go back on. You can see here it kind of slides out to the right here, if you're looking at it, and then slides back on into a little ridge under there. So if it does come off, you can put it back together. But hopefully it doesn't come off. It's kind of a pain, but it just slips right on there like that. And we put it back together here. Straight back down in. We're going to put the part that is flat to the outside here, right back in the way that it was. I'm gonna make sure everything lines up here, which it does on the back side. Now we're gonna give it a couple taps here. Now that, I'm not gonna go all the way in like they did because it's about halfway in here, halfway through, and that will hold the float on fine. It's not gonna come out of there. It can't come out of here because the bowl's gonna be in the way. So I, I'm not sure why they press that in there like that, just to make it more difficult. It seems like you can test this and make sure that you're, if you blow down through it, you should get air. And then when you put the float up, you can do a suction by mouth or by a suction test, um, which will tell you that that needle and seat in there is working. So you want to put the bowl back on now. Again, make sure you're copper pieces here for your seal. Line all this up. If for some reason the bowl gasket comes out, a lot of times if you dry it right off, if it gets real wet with carb cleaner or anything, you can kind of shove it back down through there. But normally you don't have any problems with this happening. So you can tighten the bowl back up with a pair of needle nose or something like that this bowl does not have to be super tight it's just kind of hard to get loose sometimes if you're the one loosening it up afterwards so I've got that tight there that's not gonna leak we're gonna go ahead and put this back on and get it put back together we're gonna go ahead and put this back on here as we do it we're also gonna replace the intake gasket that's six nine two one three seven intake gasket if you don't do that You'll get an air leak possibly if the old gasket's in bad shape, which will cause a regular running. That or it could also cause some surging going on. So 
With this, I like to put it back on exactly the way we took it off. If I start with the spring here on this side, then I flip it around, get my governor linkage, and then you can flip the whole thing all the way around here and put it up on, on there. So nice and easy. Put your new intake gasket on from there. I like to use a ratchet or something else to do this by hand just to make sure that I'm not going to have any issues with stripping out the plastic as there aren't any metal bushings or anything in this intake to keep that from happening. So if you do it with an impact or something like that, you may end up stripping these threads which is going to not prevent an air leak from happening here. You're going to have a bad air leak and it's going to run very, very poorly. So, oop, almost forgot the choke rod here. I'm gonna make sure that your choke rod also goes back up through. Just goes through like that, and then it fits in a slot back over here, so. You don't want to put these uh, intake bolts here through very far before you start tightening it, because otherwise the, uh, the choke solenoid there will not slip past so on top there where we got to screw it back down a lot of times it won't won't slip past so tighten these up do them real nice and snug but again don't over tighten them you don't want to strip that plastic out back there then we'll go ahead and put the 5 16th bolt that goes back into the intake or I'm sorry, the solenoid here. Once again, that plastic bolt. I'm gonna use, do it by hand. You can do it with the T30 also. Otherwise you can still use your 5 16 or your eight millimeter, whatever you're using. After you got everything tightened down there, check it, make sure everything's choking correctly. When you push the choke, your choke should come all the way closed. When you're off choke, it shouldn't be pushing at all. Your throttle should be free, it should be real light when you're on low. And when it's on high here, it should be a lot, spring back a lot quicker. So that should be all free, it should not be hitting anything. If it's hitting anything, you've got issues. Go ahead and plug this back in. Choke solenoid there, and then your solenoid. Apparently the key's on. We can go ahead and put the intake manifold back on here. Let's see, there are two seven sixteenths. You want to make sure as you're putting this back on here that you hook up your crankcase vent here at the back. So you've got to put it on first, but you'll just slip it back over. If you don't do that, you'll pull all kinds of stuff up in. It won't ruin your engine instantly, but over time it will. Depending on what gets in there, it'll take varying amounts of time. Go ahead and get these bolts tightened back down. These are nice because they have a little nipple here where you can just kind of start them and roll with one hand. It's nice and easy there for the back side. So you can just kind of push it on there and then over the top, just kind of roll, push and roll. If, you, if, it, if it catches on a thread, you know it's cross threaded, just back it out and start over. But those, if you over tighten those, that can also over tighten this bolt here so you don't want to go too tight on those either be easy on that as we put the cover back on here you want to make sure this back side usually catches up a lot i went ahead and took the plug out of here for the bottom that's going to keep us from catching up here as we're putting it back together so go ahead and put it back here And I'll show you on the other side how you get the guard up underneath to go. So this here as it comes down, you want it to line right straight up with the second notch there. So not the outside one, but with this here. So come out here like this, get that started, kind of poke it down in. And then up underneath, you'll line it up as you let it drop. 
So it does look like on this side it's got to be behind the plastic for the starter, I believe anyway. That's what it's kind of looking like. And then everything has to come down. So kind of guide it from there, get it back up in there. And everything should just push right down on there if everything's correct. Yes, it is. Just wanting to be stubborn for some reason. I'm not sure why. All right. So it should just line up there. The two go in the back, one in the front, and then everything just falls down into place there. So when it's finished, it should look something like that. And that just keeps this heat guard in place, keeps everything with the airflow and everything going around good. You can spin the top here, make sure you're not hearing any hitting, hearing anything like that, and you wanna make sure that your dipstick is all the way back down in. Everything here looks good so far. Once you got your top on there nice and good, there's a screw, the screw that goes back down through here. We already put it in, put that one in to secure everything. Here, you want your longer ones out of the two to go towards the back. You'll line those up. You'll want the flat part here to be parallel with the flat part on the engine here. So if you've got it kind of in the hole, you can move the whole cover back and forth just from this one bolt to kind of get it lined up to start. So as soon as it's 100% parallel, you know that your bolt holes lined up, you know everything's lined up, and you should be able to start it by hand. You should be able to screw it in as far as you want by hand. But we usually just get it started once we get some threads, tighten it down, the rest with the impact. The right angle works wonders for this thing, getting it done. Just nice and quick and easy, but you put your two back up front here. are nice and tight. Put your air filter back in here. Cover. And then you just got your fuel tank to go back on. I went ahead and put some fresh fuel in it. You can wait until afterwards if you'd like. It is maybe a tiny bit easier. I didn't put a lot in it, but just kind of goes straight back down in there and then you'll start your G30s back in here. This one's being kind of a pain to start but it's right there. why it works so well that way and it didn't work the other way but you want to get all four of them started before you tighten any of them down so you get the first ones there started you want to kind of go in between the unit and the engine here kind of pry up a little bit get it so it's all lined up once you've got all four of them started, you can go ahead and tighten it down. And 
You always want to check on your fuel lines in here that there's no cracks, there's no black pieces, there's no deterioration whatsoever. If there is, you're going to want to replace that. At least that section after the fuel line, that's the most, or after the fuel filter, that's the most important. If there's a bunch of stuff back here, your fuel filter stops most of it anyway, but it'll eventually come through too. So anywhere where you take the fuel line off, you want to double check, it's still in good shape. Take my clamps off there. You've got everything done. Double check the oil before you start anything up. Always a good habit to do. No matter whether it's yours or somebody else's. It's perfect on the dipstick. Pretty well right there, so. We're gonna go ahead and fire this thing up, see how it runs. Failed to mention the EPA hose, needs to go back on there, another one, but now that that's on, everything runs good, this T-130's all ready to go back to the customer. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe.